133, it feels like every year this weight is incredible. I don't think this year is going to be any different, even though I think it's going to be a very different looking weight class in terms of who has graduated, who's moved on, who's changed weights. I think it's going to look very different, but still going to be one of the most competitive weight classes in the country. Uh, I'm going to give you my All-American and National Champion predictions for this weight class. I'll give you the big names that left, some of the new faces that are going to be wrestling at 133, as well as a little bit of what happened last year. Starting with the key departures, and there were some massive, massive departures at this weight class. Starting with world champion and two-time NCAA champion Vito Arrugia. He has graduated, moved on. Now he'll be wrestling in the Senior World Championships. If you're a fan of Vito, you can watch him wrestle at the end of the month, October 30th and 31st at the World Championships. You can watch all that live on Flow. But he's gone, as is Dayton Fix, a world silver medalist and a multiple NCAA finalist and All-American. Uh, so you lose the top two returning guys or the guys that finished one and two last year have left. And a couple other names I think aren't going to be here. One, Sam Latona for Virginia Tech. He's moving up to 141 uh, to make room for a transfer, and we'll get into that. And don't be surprised if Kyorini ends up changing weight classes. It sounds like the word on the ground from Raleigh is that they're considering bumping Kyorini up. Now, he's an All-American at 133. But it sounds like he could be making the move up to 141. So he, for, for NC State, they'll lose a little bit of uh, firepower at 133, and so will this weight class because Kyarini, really, really tough guy. Now, big names jumping into this weight class. Who are the new faces jumping into 133? Well, Drake Ayala, NCAA finalist at 125. Sounds like he's moving up to 133. He'll have a huge impact. As will Braden Davis for Penn State at 133. He was the one seed at 125. Apparently, towards the end of the year, he was starting to outgrow the weight, and now he's making the move up. Now, it's not a certainty that he's going to wrestle this year because they still have Aaron Nagao at this weight class. But it seems like Aaron Nagao could still be dealing with some injury issues, which will make Braden Davis a very obvious uh, starting candidate. And he may be the guy uh, that Penn State would elect to wrestle anyways because he may just be the best guy in the room at 133. So you're getting Drake Ayala, Braden Davis. You're also going to have the return of Lucas Bird. He redshirted last year for Illinois. He's an All-American. Very tough. Good upper body. Can wrestle kind of from every position. Uh, Lucas Bird, definite threat to All-American. Connor McGonigal transferred from Lehigh to Virginia Tech. Look for him to have a good year. Maybe not a national title contender, but definitely someone that can contend for the podium. Chris Cannon, back apparently at Northwestern. He, he was at Michigan last year. Wrestled one match. A lot of injury problems. He's been on the podium before. Presumably he can do it again if everything is working well and he's nice and healthy. And then finally, Brett Unger moving from 125 to 133. So a lot of new faces at 133. Just a quick reminder of what happened at this weight class last year. It was very much the veto coaster, right? Vito Arugia was up and down throughout the year. He lost to Ryan Crookham early in November. And then he lost to him later at the at EIWA's. was 0-2 against Ryan Crookham and had you know taken some really scary... Um, near losses along the way. But Vito put it all together at the NCAA tournament, beat Crookham soundly, ended up getting a major decision before beating Dayton Fix in the finals. So Dayton finished second. You had uh, Ryan Crookham. He finished third and he only had one loss in the entire year, and that was to Vito in those semis. He wrestled back for third. He beat Nasir Bailey, um, who finished fourth in this year. For Little Rock, a true freshman, All-American, fourth place finish. He had a fantastic year, guys. And he's a guy, if you're looking for a potential candidate to, to unseat Ryan Crookham at the number one spot, Nasir Bailey is a very, very viable option. Great work from the top position. Great with tilts. Hard guy to take down. He's able to generate uh, pretty solid offense on his feet. And he was just a true freshman. You got to assume Nasir's only going to be better this year. Then you had Ragason, Frost, Shaver, and Arini rounding out that podium last year. Uh, so again, to give you some of my wild, wild cards, some of the dark horse type of guys that I think can make noise, but they've been a little more unpredictable throughout their career. Starting with Nick Buzakis, Ohio State. We've all seen what this guy can do. He's made junior world teams. He's beaten Jesse Mendez in freestyle. He's got some big wins in folk style as well, but the consistency both throughout the season and in matches even uh, has is key for Nick. And if Nick can find that even keel, there's no doubt he can be a top five, top six guy. But 
if not, if he's still a little erratic and consistent and too reliant on his power, which is next level. This guy is next level power. He could fall short again at 133 for the Buckeyes. Uh, two other names. These are more under the radar guys. Marlon Yarbrough from UVA and Kurt Phipps for Bucknell. Now Yarbrough, he is super up and down. He beats, you know, he'll beat an Aaron Nagao and he'll beat other, he beat Sam Latona, but then he'll lose to unranked guys. So for Yarbrough, kind of like Buzakis, you want to see him find that consistency. And then Phipps, Kurt Phipps from Bucknell, this guy was rock solid all year long. He had some really close matches, had some 1-0 losses with All-Americans. Look for him. And he had, of course, a great freestyle uh, ledger this spring. So keep your eye out for Kurt Phipps of Buck. Now I think he could have a really good year. All right, I'm going to get into my round of 12 and All-American predictions, starting with the round of 12. I've got some of the names I already talked about. I think Nick Buzakis finishes just off the podium this year in the round of 12. This is such a deep weight class, guys. This round of 12 uh, crop that I picked, very, very tough. Great shot at all, at placing, uh, in my opinion. Connor McGonigal, round of 12. Jacob Van D, a guy who really came on last year for, for Nebraska. True freshman, uh, I believe, last year. Maybe red shirt. But really good from top. Can get a lot of turns. Definitely a more inconsistent guy, but you would think this – coming year uh, he could potentially get on the podium his big win last year was over Dylan Raguson in, in the dual meet but he was unable to really replicate that win after that dual meet win and then a Kurt Phipps a Bucknell the final guy on the round of 12 now let's get to the to the eight All-Americans starting in eighth place I've got Lucas Bird of Illinois getting on the podium falling to Evan Frost of Iowa State Frost finishing in seventh now, Frost, is a, he, he's a tougher guy to decide because there's a couple things that are factored in. One, Frost is going to be really big for the weight. He was big last year. The cut is going to be super difficult for him. But we saw he really came into his own at the end of last year, and he gave Dayton Fix everything he could handle in their quarterfinal match. This guy is so fantastic from the top position, can get a lot of turns, and he just seemed like he was really coming into his own towards the end. And does that momentum... Is he able to maintain that momentum into this year? That's what we'll find out. But he's a guy that I think, you know, he finished, I think, six last year. He could be a top four, top three type of guy. But I think it's just a really crowded weight class. I've got uh, Shaver, Dylan Shaver from Rutgers, finishing in sixth place. He was a Big Ten champion. The guy's got an attack to every side. Really good athlete at the weight. Can wrestle from everywhere. But we saw him tech Dylan Raguson and then, he lost to him the next time out. A bit of a, a, a surpriser, but Shaver's really, really good. I think he can place high, as can Braden Davis, who I have finishing in fifth place after falling short of the podium last year for Penn State. I think going up to 133, it's going to put him right in the mix. And and this top five, it's it's uh, some of these weights. There's major separation. You know, you've got a, a 184, which has a Starachi and a Kekai's, and then likely a lot of separation there. Um, this weight, one through eight. I think these are all decision matches. I think they're all potentially one takedown matches. So it's you could really, you know, roll the dice and and come up with a really different order. I think these guys are not separated by much. Uh, Braden Davis fifth, fourth place. I have Drake Ayala um, finishing back to back podium finishes after getting second last year. Fourth, nothing to sneeze at, but this is a this is an arguably a tougher weight than what 125 was last year. Dylan Raguson, I have getting third. Second place, Nasir Bailey, Little Rock, and Ryan Crookham, your national champion. That's my prediction. And I said it on the show on Monday. I was like, man, I'm kind of looking for a reason to not pick Crookham because I think he has all the hallmarks of a guy who could get knocked off. You know, towards the end, a lot of one takedown matches, a lot of really close wins, but he gets his hand raised. And the guy beat Vito Rujao twice, and he's proven what he can do against this field. The big question for Crookham, not consistency. This guy is a consistent competitor every time out he gives you a great great result pretty much every every time he wrestles but health has been a concern even going back to his high school game high school days can he maintain the health he needs to win this weight class right now there's no question he's the best guy at this weight but in a weight that separates by so little you this is a weight where you kind of want to take a swing on another guy but i just didn't know who that would be at at this point in time ryan crookham is so so proven but 
Uh, don't be surprised at all to see a lot of chaos at this weight class, like we saw at 133, but it's a great top eight, a really solid four behind them, and who knows, every single year there's wrestlers that emerged that were off our radar in the preseason that end up being All-American contenders by the end of the year. But I want to know your podium. Who do you see in the top eight? Who do you see as your national champion? Can anyone unseat Ryan Crookham? I want to hear from you.